Welcome to Who's Laughing Now, brought to you exclusively by Hoosier TV. What motivated me to be a stand-up comedian? Um, actually, a couple things. I had a friend that kind of pushed me into it and just basically years of watching Saturday Night Live. Um, not so much the, the, the sketch aspect of it, but um, I think there was just, uh, uh, there was elements in there where that, that influenced me as well as, um, uh, you know, com there was stand-up comics in SNL, so I think it was kind of sort of some sort of combination of motivation there. It, was, uh, it took a while, it took a while for me to really decide this is what I wanted to do, so. Uh, comics who've inspired me, it's very, a, 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 I should say, a wide range of comedians, actually. Um, I usually get inspired by the comedians that are not like me, um, and I say that by guys who are more thought-provoking and social commentary, and um, even if I go back to like George Carlin and Pryor, and then on up to maybe uh, Dennis Miller and Bill Hicks, and then uh, probably now like Bill Maher or Chris Rock, and I, I like the guys who can really uh, make the audience laugh hard, and think hard, and then I kind of get back. And go, man, how do you how do you write like that? Because I seem to be a little more light and silly. And uh, but those are the guys I really you know I get into watching. You know, so it's not necessarily my style, but it's a style I really enjoy to watch. So, first time on stage was uh, Deer in the Headlights. Uh, I know my mouth was moving. Uh, I'm not sure what was coming out. Uh, I know there was somebody laughed at some point. Uh, basically, I felt like I was either just going to uh, faint, throw up, or something. Uh, so when somebody told me my time was up and I did well, I had to assume they were correct. Uh, for all I know, there was nobody in the room when I was staying up there. I was just flushed and uh, had no idea what was going on. So it was very, I, I really don't like to recall it, to be honest with you. Uh, my style of comedy, I would say, is. I think I would call it almost like witty observational, uh, and, I, and I mean maybe cut from the Seinfeld cloth in that sense. Uh, and I also like to sprinkle in impersonations, so it's a combination of both. I guess I'm, I kind of have a little bit of Dana Carvey style where it's it's silliness, but then there's impressions in there. So uh, yeah, it's witty and silly, and hopefully somebody will find something in my act to laugh at. That's what I always try to do: make sure there's something in there for everybody. So. What can the audience expect from me tonight? Uh, well, um, I, I think I smell good, and uh, that always helps if you're in the front row. But uh, just I, like I said, I think there should be something for everybody. It's, at least one person should get something I said, and if that person doesn't, then I just really hope they're not here tonight, to be honest. So, hi, I'm Marcus Bunn, and you're watching Who's Laughing Now? A Kokomo native, put your hands together for Marcus Bunn. Uh, guys, thank you for coming out, supporting a good cause. I'm glad you guys are here. Wednesday night, that's awesome. Uh, he said my name on the overhead. I'll go ahead and say it again for you guys in case you didn't hear it. It is Marcus Bunn. That's right, my last name is Bunn. Ha ha. Yeah. It's, actually my uh, it's actually my first name that confuses everybody because it's Marcus and it's spelled M-A-R-Q-U-E-S. Yeah, my parents thought that'd be unique. They were right. They just had no idea that every year on the first day of school, I get a roll call anxiety attack. <laughs> I'd always be a little kid. Teachers always got pumped up on the first day. We all ready for roll call? Okay. John Anderson. Susie Brown. Love your pigtails. Sit down, sweetie. Is it Marcuius? Marquois. I bet it's Marquis. Yep, you got it, lady. It's Marquis de Bun. Yep. I'm a 17th century French explorer, all right? Can you move this along? There's bad enough I got unicorns in my trapper keeper. Get my ass kicked to recess. I kept my trapper keeper all the way through college, man. It was awesome. Yeah. Got a, little, a lot of good colleges around here. We got IUPUI, yeah, Jaguars. We got Butler, the Bulldogs. Yeah, I went to uh, Ivy Tech. We're known as the Fighting GEDs. Yeah. We actually had a football team. They just kind of quit after the first quarter. Then they'd come back 10, 15 years later and make up the game, so. <laughs> Go Tech! 
A lot of people out here eating snacks at the table. That's awesome. Um, I probably should have ate here. I actually had uh, Arby's on the way up here. Yeah, I got to poop in two minutes. Uh, <laughs> all I'm saying is five for five is not the best deal. <laughs> that hurts. Right now. You guys ever leave Arby's? See that sign up there? Ring the bell if we did well. I'm like, man, that's a hell of a concept. I probably should get one of those above my bed. I mean, I'll have to make it small. I don't want to look at my folks. <laughs> I, t I had a bad fast food experience I went to. I was traveling. I stopped at Hardee's. Uh, I don't think Hardee's really promotes a lot of healthy options. Uh, nothing's worse than their one menu item, the pork chop biscuit and gravy sandwich. Oh, tell me about it. I got the combo. Yeah. Came with a hat pack, a Marlboro Reds, and a mullet. <laughs> I was like, this is delicious. Put on NASCAR. <laughs> so I had a good day today. I did a little shopping. Went to the shoe carnival. How can you not love the shoe carnival? Yeah, because now I know where strip club DJs work during the day. I walk in there, I get attacked. All right, guys, oh. <laughs> Today only buy one pair of Nikes. Get the second pair half off. Ooh, speaking of half off, check it out number nine. Give it up for Lexus. Somebody throw glitter on me? What the hell's going on? <laughs> Leave me alone, I'm spinning the wheel. All right, shoelaces, I'm a big winner. So it's been, uh, it's been hot here recently, uh, but it was cold, right? It just went from cold to like extremely hot, which messes with my sinuses. Yeah, and, and that's why I found out the other day, uh, I really hate people who do meth. Yeah, because every time I have a cold, I have to get a background check. Yeah. I walked up to the pharmacist. I'm like, can I get some Sudafed? She's like, sir, I need to see two pieces of ID. I'm like, do I look like a meth dealer? I have a coupon. <laughs> and teeth. Let's go. So I'm excited right now, it's my favorite time of year. Baseball season, I'm a baseball fan. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I, I read this in the news actually, there's like three or four guys, they weren't like big name guys, but they got caught for being on steroids. And uh, if you get caught for being on steroids in Major League Baseball, the first offense is a 50 game suspension. I know, I think that's harsh. I think if you're caught on steroids, you should not be suspended at all. No, you should be forced to play the next game, but on a different drug. Such as LSD. <laughs> That's right, because nothing would be funnier than watching a batter run down to first base and then try to climb inside of it. <laughs> mm. Or you could have them smoke crack, they would steal second base. <laughs> then they'd just run out in the parking lot and try to sell it. Hey, yo, man, I got this base. <laughs> Ain't never been stepped on. I actually played organized baseball. I know you can't tell by looking at my physique, but uh, Little League, yeah. I'm pretty proud I led my division in candy bar sold, so. <laughs> but what was, my dad coached me too for a little bit in Little League, he did, and we didn't have a good father-son relationship because he traded me <laughs> to an all-girls soccer team. <laughs> That's all right, I got him back. We took state that year, so no worries. I know there's a big guy, uh, the famous European soccer player, um, David Beckham. He's been over here for a few years. And uh, I only found this out. He plays for a team called the Galaxy. And this is what's weird is his soccer salary for one year 
is $6.5 million. That's true. Now here's what's weird, he has a teammate that only gets paid 17 grand. Yeah, tell me that guy you're not pissed as hell. <laughs> I'm like, Beckham better not say anything to me in the middle of a game. <laughs> hey buddy, how come you're not scoring today? I don't know Dave, why don't you do the math? <laughs> What'd you take to the game, a Rolls Royce? I took the city bus. <laughs> you're married to a Spice Girl, I don't even own a Spice Rack. Huh? You guys ever been so drunk you start dancing to karaoke? <laughs> We're doing that later, Marcus. I was at the karaoke at the bar, somebody just pushed me in front of the machine. I don't know what was going on. I was like, what? Okay, I got it. Okay. Okay. Ooh, okay. Uh, love Shack, baby, Love Shack. Uh, instrumental break, 13 measures. Copyright 1989. <laughs> I used to get drunk, think I was famous people doing karaoke. When I was Christopher Walken, started doing Gwen Stefani's Holler Back Girl. I was on to it, I was like, hey, hey, hey. I'm not your Holler Back Girl. I'm not your bitch. This shit, this shit is bananas. <laughs> It's B-A-N. <laughs> it's bananas. Hey, you guys, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching Who's Laughing Now? Brought to you exclusively by Hoosier TV. Hoosier TV.